In this series of videos, I've been looking at what energy deal is the best for you. Now, in today's video, we're not going to be looking at Octopus Cozy and Flux. Those videos have already been done. Check them out top right. We're going to be looking at Octopus Go, which is one of the oldest special tariffs for EV deals that first existed. It's not an Economy 7, it's not an Economy 10. It was a new invented tariff by Octopus that took half an hour data from smart meters to give EV drivers cheaper electricity at night. Now, I'm revisiting it for a couple of reasons. I've done videos on it in the past, but the rates have changed and also complexities now. People have battery home storage. They want to know, can they charge it on go? Uh, we want to know if you have solar, is it still the cheapest deal? Is there other alternative to Octopus Go? Well, Today's video, we're going to be looking at exactly that. Now, if you don't have solar and you don't have a battery, but you have an electric vehicle, then Go is likely going to be one of the best deals around for you with Octopus Energy at the moment. Now, there is a couple of caveats, and that is if you have a, a compatible car API or a compatible charger, you could probably go on Intelligent. Now, there'll be some videos coming about Intelligent soon, and I suggest you click the subscribe and notification bell, especially if you've got an API compatible car and not a charger, and you are thinking of buying a new charger soon, because I've done a series of charger reviews if you haven't seen them and there's some rumors going around that the api supported cars may go away and you may have to only be able to get a compatible charger that works for the tariff check out that video on octopus intelligent when it comes it's about a couple of weeks away and there's a lot of research and a lot of filming that i need to do for that video so make sure you check it out when it comes now octopus go if you aren't on a compatible charger and you aren't on a compatible car is going to be the cheapest octopus deal for you unless you obviously have solar and you also have a battery which we'll get into in a second for those two customers now if you want to know what rate it is on octopus go they change for out the country but for my area for my postcode region it is 12p off uh, off peak which is going to be the same for everyone and that runs between half 12 and half four then you've got the peak rate. Now the peak rate runs for all the other times. Now for my area, it is 41.63p uh, a kilowatt hour. And you, what you need to remember is if you aren't an Octopus customer yet and you go to evnick.com forward slash energy, there's a code there to sign up to Octopus and split a hundred pound with me and a link so you can get the Octopus Go rates for your area and a spreadsheet so you can compare all the Octopus deals, which is going to be especially useful for the solar and battery customers we're about to discuss now. Now, I've had a couple of people comment in the past that Octopus Go is not cheap for them, and they said that they are better on the government price cap, which at the moment is 35p, and that's because they currently look at the peak rate on Octopus Go, which is 40p, and they think, well, it's 5p extra on my peak rate, it's not going to save me any money. What they're forgetting is the law of averages. And the law of averages say that the more you're going to be using on the off-peak rate, which is the 12p rate, the more your average rate will considerably fall. And you'd have to be an insanely low EV mild driver. You'd be have to, you know, charging up literally maybe once a month. That kind of insanity to have your average be above the 35p price cap what the government are currently protected at the moment so if you are an ev driver and you're doing you know a typical three or four thousand miles a year you're going to be cheaper on go but you, there is another caveat there which is if you use an insane amount of power in the peak hours which can't be shifted to off peak because the get, best thing about octopus go is the cheap half 12 to half four rate is all your electric. So for me, it's the dishwashers going on, the washing machines going on. Sometimes the dryer goes on. I have battery timers for all my batteries, all my batteries that work in my cameras and my lighting systems. They all get recharged between half 12 and half four at the cheapest, cheapest rate. Now, there is a spreadsheet at evnick.com forward slash energy to put in your current peaks and what your mileage is. And it will also work out some really complicated sums for you so i suggest you do your sums but if you are still on the government price cap and you drive an ev then you are likely more than likely paying a lot more than you should now if you're a battery owner this is definitely going to save you a fortune if you have a battery and an ev and no solar then octopus go or intelligent and leaving that caveat in there are going to be the best deals for you because you can charge your octopus 
go rate from half to half four every day. You can use whatever you want, the dishwasher, the washing machine. The car doesn't need to be on charge during these rates, by the way. It is just every single day, half to half four, which means you can charge your battery and use it to discharge to the house during the peak eight hours, which is precisely what I'm doing with the battery I've got at the moment. I'm doing a series on batteries and inverters. If you haven't you know, heard about it yet, go and check out the link at the top right. There's a link to all my re battery reviews and invert reviews that I'll be doing over the course of the next couple of years to try and give you the best information on what they're like. Now, I've not really, uh, I've done some rough calculation on the back of a fag packet of round crown losses of my battery, but at the moment, let's just say my peak rate and off peak rate are now a lot closer to the off peak rate since I had my battery. My overall bill has dropped considerably because I'm charging that battery now during the cheap off peak hours and discharging it during the peak. However, if you got solar, it gets a little bit more complex. Now, the reason it gets tricky is on Octopus Go, you can't be on Octopus Outgoing, which is the higher paid rate for export. You can only be on Octopus's SEG tariff, which is a lot lower for your export. So if you're still exporting quite a lot of energy, you need to maybe look at either Octopus Flux or just being on the standard flexible deal and paying 35p and getting paid the Octopus's outgoing rate for your export. So check out those deals, do some do some, do some of the spreadsheet, do some maths for yourself, work out what would be the best deal. Because if you are exporting a lot, it's going to probably not be the best deal for you. But do your sums. Now, one thing I'd also say, which is quite important to get to sort of get out there, is if you're at home all day and you're not charging your EV from your solar and you're exporting it because your charger can't do it or you haven't got a way of ramping down the amps, then maybe check out some of the reviews I've done on chargers up the top right, where I've done reviews on chargers that can match the export to your EV charge rate and change the rate depending on the house load so you don't export and you're trying to put as much of that thing in a battery. Even if your home battery's full, your EV battery might not be. Now, finally, we are left with the people with heat pumps. If you have an EV and a heat pump or solar or a mix, then maybe you want to check out this video here that I did about Octopus Cozy, which is a specific deal for heat pump customers. And if you've got a lot of export, then maybe check out this video I did on Octopus Flux.